Some people call them the cherry pickers. For 160 years ago, a detachment of the 11th Hussars was caught by the French in a Spanish orchard and had to fight its way out. They prefer their true name, Prince Albert's Own. Here in North Germany on their 250th birthday, they parade before Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, who has come to present them with their guidon. A guidon is for the cavalry what colours are for the infantry, the symbol of the regiment's pride and determination. Their uniform is unique. The bright crimson colour is recognisable anywhere. This too is the Prince Consort's own, a colour taken from his family coat of arms. The regiment was originally raised to protect King George I, so it's symbolic that this ceremony should be taking place in his homeland on Hanoverian soil. The mounted detachment leaves the parade as the scene is recorded for the regiment by artist Terence Cuneo. Later, back in England, in his garden near the Thames, he puts the finishing touches to yet another of the ceremonial pictures for which he's famous. These old uniforms, now used only on ceremonial occasions, were once everyday wear. The Hussars looked like this when they fought at Waterloo and charged with the Light Brigade at Balaclava. This last exploit is commemorated by this piece of silver part of the regiment's treasures. After they had escorted him from Dover for his wedding to Queen Victoria, Prince Albert asked that they should become his own regiment. Albert came from Coburg in Bavaria, a town dominated by its ancient castle, the Festa, ancestral home of the Dukes of Saxony. He was born here at Rosenau, just outside the town. It's now an old people's home. Here too, he got engaged to Queen Victoria, and this was her favorite view. In the little village church, restored by her after his death, their arms are displayed. So are the badge and motto, Troy und Vest, true and strong, which the 11th Hussars now wear. In Coburg Castle, the band of the regiment, proud to call itself Prince Albert's own, plays for his own people. The Hussars have come to celebrate not only the regiment's 250th birthday, but also the 125th anniversary of Albert's marriage. In the fairy tale atmosphere of Coburg, the modern British soldier doesn't seem out of place. He can make friends anywhere. So, to the strains of what is both the regimental and the town march, Coburg, the men of the 11th Hussars, march their guidon into the marketplace. Among them is Albert's descendant, Prince Michael of Kent. The colonel gives the Lord Mayor an old ceremonial pouch with Coburg's arms on it. The Lord Mayor gives the officers medals, symbolizing the historic link between the town and the regiment. The guidon is marched into the town hall to fly from the balcony. Seldom has the band paraded in so small a space, but never before a more enthusiastic audience. Throughout its history, the regiment's destiny has been linked with the Germans, both as allies and enemies. The colonel pays his tribute to the fallen soldiers of Coburg. Back in the market square, there is another wreath to be laid, 
and another close connection to recall. Prince Michael of Kent salutes his great-great-grandfather. As the Hussars march away, they are followed by the men of one of the oldest shooting guilds in Bavaria. For the shooting festival is on, and the whole town is celebrating. But it's not all festival in Coburg. Ten miles away, the Iron Curtain curves like a horseshoe round three sides of the town. A grim reminder of a divided Europe. A reminder, too, that the long connection of the 11th Hussars with Germany is not yet ended. Back at Hohner Camp near Hanover, the regiment trains on the biggest ranges in Europe for its role protecting both Britain and the West. Twenty years ago, the 11th Hussars were part of the famous Desert Rats, facing the might of Rommel's tanks in Africa. Now they exercise with the Germans as friends, past enmities forgotten. Modern conditions demand that allies should get to know each other in time of peace. They can't even afford to speak a different language. They must be ready to meet any emergency and to act together. Enemy concentration on left flank increasing. I'm coming to your location now. Over. In these days, defense is, above all, a matter of communication. It can't be isolated in separate compartments, nor can it be effective in one element only. Every man must know precisely what he has to do and how he fits into the general scheme. For this, constant training is essential, and pretty realistic it is, too. the 11th Hussars have fought all over the world in their 250 years. Since the Second World War, they have fought in the jungles of Malaya and sweltered in the deserts of the Arabian Peninsula. But always their destiny has brought them back to Germany. Here on the plains of Hanover, that destiny has come full circle. Raised to protect the first Hanoverian King of Britain, they are now helping to protect the descendants of his Hanoverian subjects, and so to protect the British as well. The link with Hanover keeps the significance that it had so long ago. Such regiments as these give a touch of colour and excitement to everyday life. This may not last. The day may come when they will lose their picturesque identities and be known merely as numbers. That, say some, will be progress.